Hello everybody! Before we get started on this video, please leave me in the comments what are your top three biggest gaming disappointments of all time. Let's get in the video. I want to talk about these games that were slight disappointments in the eyes of some, and I'm going to show or talk about some in the very beginning here that I did not play myself, but were generally received as disappointments for whatever reason. So let's start out, No Man's Sky was uh, not really a, a dead on arrival game, but it was... Uh, <clears throat> generally what happened was there was such a hype train for it and that's something that we need to talk about is people's expectations of things because sometimes the expectation they really outrun any possibility of the developers landing that that's part of the case but also the PR for No Man's Sky leading up to it was helmed I feel like uh, whoever it was for No Man's Sky really stoked the fire that was building up for that game, and they just could not land that ship. They didn't have the things they said was going to be in the game. They straight up kind of lied. You know what I mean? Like, they just straight up lied about shit. Uh, so, had a terrible rep. The game itself was pretty shallow, I believe. Um, going off memory here, right? It was pretty shallow uh, at base. But now, here we are later, the game is, I think, everything and more than they said it would be. Um, which is sucks because it's like, hey, eventually it's got to get released. It got released like it did. It's, and supposedly it's a good ass game now. So, I mean, if you guys have never heard of it, go take a look at it. I mean, you know, you might find a game you like. No Man's Sky. Star Wars Battlefront 2, the EA released, was a clusterfuck, to say the least. I mean, it was, uh, at, at release, there was all these, like, monetization schemes and stuff, and it was like, you could upgrade your characters, and you had these stronger, like, you had to pay money, and, well, you didn't have to pay money, but you got a lot more when you did pay money, and some people's Boba Fett could fly, I don't know if it's twice as long, it might have been twice as long as, like, the base Boba Fett, so, I mean, I mean, you're literally getting advantages. It's actually pay to win. That's what people call pay to win. I mean, you still have to shoot people, right? But you you have advantage. You have pet. You're paying for advantage. Battlefront really suffered from it. And what it is now is it's another game. I think is a very good game. I have thought that EA Star Wars games have always done good with visuals and audio. I mean, it's, it's it looks it looks and sounds exactly how Star Wars should. Uh, it's just sometimes the, I don't know, the corporate machine, that cog that keeps turning is just, uh, some decisions get made, man, they're just, they're clearly not the right decisions to be made, but, uh, yeah, so e EA Star Wars Battlefront 2 was another big disappointment, and that was one that I was gonna play, I, I was disappointed in the first one, too, this first one was super shallow, um, I guess I'll just go ahead and talk about that right now. It's like they put out the beta for a couple, uh, a couple of maps for the main game mode. And then you get the game, and it's like, oh, there's only one other map for this. And then it's like, most of the other game modes are pieces of those maps. For the majority. There's not a giant weapon variety. There's not a lot of class variety. You know what I mean? So, that was, uh, pretty rough. Uh, Battlefront 1 was for me, because I actually played that one. Um, let's see. Uh, an older game is uh, Devil May Cry 2. And what's weird about that is it feels like <clears throat> they had such a... Like, at, for its time, it was like a cult classic, kind of, in Devil May Cry 1. And Devil May Cry 2, like, damn near derailed all that. Um, I'm not really sure how sales and everything went, but I actually, my first time playing Devil May Cry was Devil May Cry 2, and I was just like, this is not very fun. And if you ever watch anyone play the game, the game is not fun. So, uh, I mean, that's, that could be super highly opinionated, right? But it's just, the game is not fun, I can say that from experience. Uh, Devil May Cry 3 is seen as the best? I kind of like 5. I'll be honest with you, like five, four, uh, it'd probably be, for me, it'd probably be, I think it'd be five, I think five, then three, five, three, one, four, two, there you go, but, uh, yeah, there's, that's an older game that was a disappointment, um, Resident Evil 6, right, <clears throat> let me tell you about Resident Evil 6, so Resident Evil 4 is not only, one of the best Resident Evil games, it's, I mean, it's so transformative 
and influential, it might be on some people's best games of all time. You know, some some people may think that, you know, it's definitely in a top 10 somewhere for them, you know what I mean? If you had to put it out there. So, uh, so the thing is, Resident Evil 5 came out, and it was way, it was super action-oriented, oriented, and it was co-op, and I mean, co-op was pretty cool. It's fun. Like, a, a lot of times games can not be exactly what they should be, but, you know, if with a friend, they, it transcends some of those things. And the thing about Resident Evil 5 is, how can you do horror when you have friend? You know what I mean? Like, it's more suspense than just horror. Um, especially survival, because... Resident Evil 5 is pretty heavy on the action, um, which is kind of unfortunate. That's the that's the angle things started going. But Resident Evil 6, <clears throat> I literally booked a trip to Six Flags around Halloween because I thought it'd be uh, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as hot. Um, hopefully, it wouldn't be as hot. They have some of their Halloween stuff up. And also, they had a, a specific date where they had Resident Evil 6 to be demoed. Like, big, long demo at a station, like a whole little event. I get there, and the event itself is very lackluster. It's just like a prop-up little shack, and it has, like, six stations that you can play the demo in, right? <clears throat> but, dude, like... This game is so action-oriented. And the thing is, is, like... it. It is truly, it's pretty miraculous that they even got it off the ground like they did because there's so many other, there's like multiple campaigns in it and they kind of, they got their own styles, right? Like when you play as Chris, you're straight up like almost Call of Duty in that shit, like, or, or Gears, you know what I mean? Like you're shooting so much, uh, but, but damn, like it, it is kind of, <clears throat> too much altogether, kind of confuddled, you know what I mean? There's so much to talk about it. You, you would have to go watch a specific video just on Resident Evil 6 for me to give you all the details of why Resident Evil 6 is not it, okay? But there's a reason why there's like a slight break, and then we went back to, you know, uh, horror. Straight up horror. So, that's Resident Evil 6. Um, next on my list is... <clears throat> is Really, I mean, I guess games as a service in general, to me, are a disappointment just because there hasn't been one, or I don't want to say there hasn't been one, it's just I stopped trying to let them win me over. There's so much fear missing out for me. I work way, oh, that was before I even worked a lot. Like, I work way more now. I have no time, the, the Service games as a service want you to play just that game. They want you to monetize and put money into just that game. You have to do just that game almost all the time to to get anywhere. Like substantially, right? You can enjoy the, the what they put out, but you know, if you want to do end game and you want to get like max stuff, min max and your characters, you have to put a lot of time into those things. And it's I know a lot of people this is a favorite type of game, for sure. It's just not mine. And so this next one, Fallout 76. Uh, I mean, if you look on Best Buy, about twice a month they sell Fallout 76 for like $3, $4, something like that. They're getting damn near to giving away for a dollar or for free. Like, they must have ordered so many copies of Fallout 76 and they are just burning them. You know what I mean? Like... It, they could just heat the all all of their stores with the copies that they could burn of Fallout 76. Uh, Fallout 76 was a DOA for me. I mean, there were so many glitches, there's so many issues. It was something that I didn't really, I did not want. Right, in particular, it's like I I don't get it. Like I don't I don't get the concept of Fallout 76 really. And I, I mean I'm. Sh it may be better now, right? I have not looked into it much at all anymore, right? If you're a fan of Fallout 76, that's totally fine. I'm just saying, at release, for me, in a personal sense, I was like, I don't get it. I can just see this being a cluster. And it turned out to be. Because people were like, oh, go ahead and buy it. And I'm like, no. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. <laughs> all right. I've seen some of the other stuff that's happened in these Bethesda games. I'm not buying this online one at release. 
and it looks super shallow from what I saw the first couple weeks, like story-wise, and I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I just, there's so much stuff about 76 and all the publicity around it, and just, I think Fallout 76 probably is a big disappointment for a lot of people, but fans that stuck it out, they're probably happy with it now. Maybe. I don't know. So, that's that's the ones... Uh, I guess I would say... Let me think back. I, this, this is going off the list. So, I think like... I uh, think when like Mortal Kombat went into like the 3D era... Kind of lost me a little. Um, I don't think 4 was terrible. It wasn't very good. Um, Deadly Alliance was okay. I actually... Deception was probably the best out of them. Probably. But I... It just... It didn't have that feel for me, you know what I mean? And, and Armageddon's... Armageddon's ass. It just is. I mean, we don't gotta talk about it. It's ass. If you've never seen it, Armageddon's just... It is what it is. They try to put every character that's ever in the game in it. And split up people's attacks all these other people. And put in weird... Make your own fighter, which I spent way too much time doing. I mean, that 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 was one of those features back in the day that was like, why is this in this game? <laughs> why is this here? Why? Anyways, so uh, let's get on to the ones that I actually really wanted to dive into about, okay? And I know this is way later in the video, but my video, the main bulk of what I want to talk about here is... Not in any particular order, right? And I'm sure what I'm going to say will have... Some people will feel very differently about what I'm about to say. But this is just my personal opinion of my biggest disappointments, right? Let's just go ahead and talk about it, I guess. Um, Metal Gear Solid Five has... It probably is my number one. Uh, it, it might be my number one ever. And I don't think Metal Gear Solid 5 is bad. Uh, very different. I think the sandbox and the gameplay and what you could do with that game and what they could have built off of was actually fantastic. Um... But, if you don't know, there was a point where they have been working on Metal Gear Solid 5 for so long, and the company in general was uh, getting out of gaming. Um, Konami's just kind of out of gaming. The swap to pachinko machines was just like, kind of like bingo machines, or slot machines, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, they have like animations and stuff, whatever. Or like pinball machines, kind of, you know, they're not really pinball machines. Anyways. There was such a distinct lack of narrative and story in Metal Gear Solid 5 that it was just like, it was just the huge gaping uh, elephant in the room. Is I'm playing it and I'm like, hey, when is this, when is this story going to start going? Like, like there's a huge, the, the opening, right? The opening is gigantic in so cinematic and massive in scope and it is really about it uh there are cutscenes in the game but i mean going away from david hater i mean there's really not a ton of dialogue for uh all oh, piss his name escapes me right now um his name escapes me but, uh, anyways, the guy that took over for Snake, uh, there wasn't even a lot for him to say. There wasn't even a lot for him to do, really. Like, I mean, when I say do, I mean, there's just not really bouncing off of anybody. Like, there are other characters doing stuff, and the story's mostly kind of revolving around other things. Like, and you're just there, kind of, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I just know that it's the biggest disappointment for me because it's like there's so much potential in that first opening scene and there's so much potential in the opening world and the building and the uh 
the mini games of uh, building up your base and getting all this new tech and there's really cool stuff in the game you can do all these interactions and all these things and then there's just not a story literally at all and I'm just like I don't I don't know man I would have paid a hundred dollars when I was broke as a joke for the story to be finished from Metal Gear Solid 5 and there's like the people broke into the game and saw like an extra cutscene it was like it, it would help but it's still not explaining everything like we still know where that's gonna go you know what I mean like god just they pushed Kojima out basically they didn't let the guy finish his game in general they didn't let him finish it okay that being said a very slight deviation is Death Stranding was Not a, like, oh my god disappointment, but, like, what, it's like he's trying to make a new genre of game. And someone may iterate it and do it better, but for a first go, I mean, you just kind of run around, man. It's not that kind of, it's not the kind of game for me. You know, I wind up having to just see what the story is about because there's no way I'm going to be able to play it. There's no way I'll be able to beat all of it. I played some of it, and I'm just like, nothing's grasping me. Unfortunate. Um, Death Stranding may be pretty good for some people, but it's just not my cup, cup of tea. Um, Cyberpunk 2077. There's not really a whole lot I need to say about Cyberpunk 2077. It's sort of, uh, I mean, it's such a disaster. It's... Uh, out of all of them on here, it's probably the worst, um, offender, because the game is broken. The game is broken, uh, the game's not as, the game's not as good as it could be, um, narrative I thought was a, a cool concept, uh, but not only did Cyberpunk not do well, they may have tarnished their entire reputation for the next decade. And that is substantial damage that they did with Cyberpunk. To just to your whole company, you know what I mean? Like, damn, all that goodwill they made with Witcher 3, gone. Just absolutely gone. It's a damn shame. So Cyberpunk is definitely on my list. Uh, even though I played a shit ton of it. Um, I didn't beat it though. I stopped right towards the end. I have a bad habit of doing that. Um, so actually, I'm gonna end this list with one that is uh, maybe maybe controversial and not controversial at the same time. I think Destiny is one of the biggest disappointments of all time in gaming, and I say that because it felt like Bungie had the heat. Okay, we're done with Halo, right? Did did Reach was like, ah, Reach, mm, I don't know, and then you know they had Reach, and they jump out, and then they're with PlayStation, and PlayStation's like, we're gonna be supporting them. This is gonna be like a ten year game. Like, oh my god, what? Like, what is this? Like, you know, space sci-fi powers, all that jazz. And that was, that was kind of hot at the time with like Overwatch, like people with abilities, uh, Black Ops 3, when your characters had abilities, supers, and stuff like that. Um, that was hot mechanic at the time. Uh, which, which also, I think I need to make a, I should make a video about mechanics that were hot at the time, and go back and think about those, because now I've, I've mentioned two of them now, and I should start writing them down. Anyways, so Destiny, the thing about Destiny was like, it was super strange lacking at the beginning right which many of the disappointments are so but it's a it's a live service so we started getting more and i like i played as much as i thought i could and then vault of glass came out and i was like i was like oh i gotta have six dudes like wait i gotta have five other dudes play this i was like i ain't got no friends to play this game nobody plays this game that i know shit and as before, the, I didn't, I didn't like the whole looking for groups thing. I just didn't, right? And that was before like Discord was such a big thing, and it was like uh, it may be friendlier now, right? Or not? I don't know. Maybe you are toxic assholes. That's I'm not in the community anymore. No 
So, Bought the Glass came out, and you needed five other people to play. And that was before I was comfortable looking for groups and dis uh, Discord and all that. And, uh, you know, I just, just didn't really... That's not what I wanted out of a game, you know what I mean? I kind of like the matchmaking aspect. I was like, hey, man, if I can't... I can't matchmake and be something, like... I mean, I don't know. I feel like that's what the game should have been oriented around. But they want to go into the more MMO style where there's raids are raids. Like, you have to know what you're doing. You have jobs. Like, you have to do this. You know what I mean? It's totally cool because, I mean, once you actually do them and beat them, like, you do feel pretty accomplished. Uh, so, th that wasn't the bigger problem with Destiny. Is I got out when Baltic Glass came out. I didn't play the first DLC. Uh, I played the second one, which what I didn't think was as good. So, then I came back and played both DLCs. And wound up playing the raid. Uh, the Crota raid. Played the Bought the Glass, um, did the Skull Loss arena thing, whatever it was. Uh, and then uh, Take a King came out. And Take a King I thought was good. I thought Take a King was actually pretty good. And uh, story wise, environmental wise, uh, added supers, all kinds of stuff. I liked everything they added. Um, but dude, the biggest thing about Destiny is like th the lore is not in the fucking game the lore's not in the game like it, it, there's not there's not a lot there's not a put their cutscenes or 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 dialogues or anything the best stories are just written in the little lore tabs that's all there was you have to read all that and then people had to actually make a website that compiled it so you could actually go do it so you didn't go from like paragraph and this to this to this that all connected if you had the, the atom set you know what i mean like why? Why? I know it's expensive cutscenes and all that are expensive, but it's like that's the stuff that makes you care about characters. And it's just, I I don't know. It's, it, it didn't feel the same, right? Like, I understand MMOs have a lot of text, uh, text right? That you just read and stuff like that. But this just diff it just felt different. It was felt more cinematic. It felt super supported. It pushed like super AAA. Like, I mean, just like millions and millions and millions of dollars of budget is what it felt like. Like, this felt like the blockbuster. And it's like, there's this... And the lore is amazing. The I come back to Destiny about, like, uh, uh, every half a year and just listen to all the lore. And it's it's fantastic. The writers ball out, okay? And that's the biggest disappointment for me is beyond the fact it's like the, the FOMO, right? There's the fear of missing out, right? Fear of missing out. Every time you have expansion come out and all that, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that comes out, and our stuff is not good anymore, and you got to power it back up. Or, God forbid, back in the day, you, just, you can't power it back up, and you just lose it. You know what I mean? You have to get new stuff. As soon as you get a single piece of item, it's better than everything you just had and you worked for for months and months and months. It's just ass. Beyond that aspect that I don't really like about MMOs in general, that's this is my video, my disappointments. Then the narrative is there. The narrative is there, and it's just not in the game. It's not in the game. They added lore tabs and stuff later. I don't want to read a novel. I will go read your novelization when it comes out of a book. You know what I mean? I don't want to do it in here. Like, I don't... Some of it needs to be in the game. Like, the, the whole... I think it was Last Word versus Thorn. That should have been, like, a single-player experience that was in the game. Like they like a DLC where you just went through all of that and it was just like a cinematic, right? That should have been a whole thing itself. Put some other side team on there or something. You know what I mean? Like, sure, it might take them forever to get it done, but it's like the stories, the legends, and the lore is just like, what the fuck are we doing? You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's so many cool moments that would be cinematic and ha they could be their own campaigns. Like, I don't know. There, there's so many cool things. It feels like they're all not in the game like not playable they don't talk to you directly about them in a way that i mean you can't interact with it it's just like i i mean it blows my mind then destiny 2 comes out destiny 2 comes out and uh i don't know i don't know what to say about destiny 2 really uh they gonna kill cade about the only person we actually care about in the whole entire game, really. Besides Superbot, but damn. Uh, yeah. So, I, I, I mean, I've been ranting and raving. This video's 
getting kind of close to close to too long. Let's just put it that way. So I I'm kind of done done dumping on Destiny. I Destiny is fun. It's still fun. And I don't think it's a bad game. It's just there's a lot of aspects that I thought uh, Destiny is a disappointment to me because I think Destiny could have been the best game of all time. And that's just the way I feel. I feel like it could have hit all the, the ticks for me, you know what I mean? And it just barely hit any of them. And I've still played the game a shit ton. And I may still come back again and play some more when I get the itch. But, uh... Destiny just ain't it, man. Like, in general, like, for, for compared to what I see it could be. And I didn't have, like, uber hype for this game either. This is not one of those, oh, it under delivers on my over expectance, right? It's just the way it was set up. I'm like, okay, well, this has a lot of backing from the people that made Halo. The Halo guys. You know what I mean? And they're going to make a game for, like, 10 years. And it's got cool aspects and mis mystery and intrigue. And powers and all these guns, looter shooter, and just all this armor and just I mean it, it's still probably one of the more successful games in a really long time, but I just feel like it could be the best game. I feel like it could be. It's just never gonna be. So thank you guys for watching so much. If you guys would please subscribe and leave a like if you would. Um it it would really help me out. Uh Honestly, what would help me out the most, uh, beyond the normal subscribing and uh, liking the video, is if you would share this with someone else you think would uh, enjoy my kind of videos. Um, that's kind of like the only way I'm going to be able to get traction, is if people start sharing it. So, if you would, guys, uh, please share this video. And I will see you next time.